We've all seen a horror movie, right? Some ghost movie where the kid sees dead people, or a fair use zombie flick from the 50s. Even an epic where horror legends Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees battle it out through fire and flame for 97 minutes. Too specific? I don't care. Because today, I'm going to take you deep into the bowels of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, including Freddy vs. Jason, to prove to you that practical effects in these horror films are more convincing, scary, and generally awesome than their CGI counterparts. Let's start at the beginning with 1984's A Nightmare on Elm Street. This is a slasher about Midwestern teens that end up meeting their worst nightmares at the hands of the dream world killer, Freddy Krueger. The film was written and directed by Wes Craven and is a horror work of art, especially in terms of practical effects. There was nothing fake in the first, that we were all there in the same room, we were all acting together. The reality of it being really there with the actor makes such a difference in their performance. The fact that we do this stuff live and that we do it on camera and we get it in one take or two takes, whatever, is, um, is, is part of the romance of the genre. They had 80 effect shots in a 90 minute film that they shot in 26 days, which brings me to the first intense effect scene, Tina's death. <laughs> Can we all agree that that was incredibly, amazingly horrifying? Let me run you through exactly how they did this stunt. Firstly, the crew built a fully rotating room. Every piece of furniture was nailed down. They built a chair rig onto one wall of said room where the camera was nailed down as well, and the crew had industrial seats with seat belts to keep them strapped in. A very intense setup. As Tina moved, no wires were pulling her. The room was actually rotating. I was either crawling or being dragged. Um, however, I was always on the floor. Boy, did she ever do that, that moment when she's killed. She just, she just nailed it. That effect is astonishing. It is so real. Well, mostly because it is. The scariness of this kill comes from the fact that it feels real to the audience. That girl is literally being dragged along all these different walls and ceilings and then drops dramatically down, splashing blood everywhere. Through a combo of an intense stunt and a fantastic actress, this kill speaks to the audience, but the MPAA deemed it too violent and scary to be fully shown. So I just went after that whole scene. As soon as she hit the bed, we were not allowed to show any sort of a splash whatsoever. Now this first film was unfortunately subjected to the horrendous era of 2000s horror remakes. A Nightmare on Elm Street was remade in 2010, the first installment that did not cast Robert England as Freddy Krueger. This installment was gritty, too predictable, and overall, just a miss. The first film was so successful and has such a style given its release time, incredible writer slash director, and a perfect cast. So trying to remake something that was so good is pretty stupid. They replaced Tina with Chris. It's the same character, they just gave her a different name. Okay, sure, anyways, let's watch her die. Found you. <laughs> This kill, though still valid, is not nearly as rawly effective as Tina's original death. We completely lose the effect of Tina being dragged upside down the wall. Chris's death is CGI and not fully practically done. You can tell. Just kind of feels... disappointing? Comparing the two, the original death is clearly more effective in its realism and generally scarier. The original series clearly did not play around when it came to practical effects and what they were willing to do. 
I've already gone over how the Nightmare on Elm Street remake failed in the department of CGI, but there's another installment in the series that epically fails because of their choice to use CGI rather than practical effects. The 2003 classic Freddy vs. Jason. Directed by Ronnie Yu with a screenplay drafted and drafted and drafted again, this film posed the fantastical idea of two horror icons facing each other in the battle of the ages. What this film failed in was its reliance on CGI that did not age well at all. The sad part is, some stunts are practical and those ones are the ones that look awesome, but the bad CGI stands out too much for it to be ignored. The Got Your Nose scene was unfortunately ruined by this reliance on CGI. It was made half practical by building a prosthetic of Kelly Rowland's nose and designed nose innards behind it. The front was pulled off in front of a green screen by some finger knives. They even did some stunt work with actual finger knives in Rowland's nose. So why does it look so bad? Because they CGI mastered it. There are more examples of just unrealistic CGI that really just takes the audience out of the scariness because how can you get scared by something so goofy? All in all, this just proves that practical effects in these films are the way to go. If you're looking for a more realistic horror and a way to legitimately connect with the fear your audience holds, take the time to hire the right people, figure things out together, and do it all practically. I'm telling you, it'll make things look like a dream.